Namaste. Do you know that intense feeling you get in your stomach when you argue with someone? Or that stress you feel when you have a million things to finish at work? If you think yes, then you may already know the impact stress has on your body. But do you know the huge impact food has on your stress response? In this video, we will give you powerful tips to control the stress-stomach connection and also master your health with Ayurveda. First, we will go over some yoga tips for stress management and then Ayurvedic nutrition to help balance stress levels. My name is Simi Potan and I am the founder of Third Eye Fitness and Stream Yoga Now. I am so excited and honored to be part of these episodes with Shanti Gram. So since we are talking about stress and also the stress stomach connection, I will go over four yoga postures that can help you release stress. The first one is called Sukhasana, easy pose. And when you sit in Sukhasana, you can either bring the left leg forward or the right leg forward. And from Sukhasana, we're going to fold forward. So you begin to walk the hands forward, release the chest down, length, lengthen through both arms. And then we just take a few deep breaths here. and then slowly come out of the posture. You can stay in this posture anywhere from three to five breaths. So if you have the right leg in front, maybe you can switch the leg and then go uh, down into that posture and then hold again for maybe three to five breaths. The next posture is called Balasana or child's pose. This is also a beautiful stretch to release stress. So you begin to bring the hips down towards the heels, walk the hands forward, and then release the chest down towards the thighs. You can relax your forehead down on the mat. And for some reason, if the forehead doesn't reach the mat, you have the option to use the block. You can use one block or two blocks and then release your forehead and place it on the block. And then we hold this posture once again from three to five breaths. So in this breath, we want to focus on creating some space in the body with the inhale. And as you exhale, you begin to relax and release any tension in your chest. and then slowly come out of the posture when you're done with three or five cycles of breath. The third one is called Paschimottasana, which is where we straighten both legs. We take the arms over the head with an inhale. And as you exhale, begin to reach forward. Now you don't have to push yourself to go really far. Just focus on lengthening the back taking the arms forward, and then release your hands down wherever it lands. You don't have to um, try to reach the toes. If it doesn't reach, you can stay right here. It doesn't matter where you are. You can even release your hands here, release your hands on the mat. So go as far as you feel comfortable, and then you can relax your chin in towards the chest, and we hold here from three to five breaths. Again, the idea is as you inhale, you create space in the back body, the posterior side of the body. And then as you exhale, release any tension in your chest and your shoulders. And when you're done with the cycle of breaths that feel comfortable, inhale and come back. Exhale, arms come down. Okay, the last one I like to share with you is a standing posture, which you can do at any time, anywhere. So you can come to the front of the mat or wherever you are, it doesn't matter. 
So what we're going to do is push the hips back and then slowly come down, leading from the chest. So the way the breath works is, we inhale, take the arms over the head, and as you exhale, push the hips back, and then begin to release the chest down towards the thighs. So here, we are in Uttanasana, or standing forward fold. You can even bend the knees slightly, and then begin to relax the chest down on the mat. So we're not trying to stretch the thighs, we're trying to release tension from the shoulders and the neck. Allow the crown of the head to go a little closer towards the mat. And then relax here, three to five breaths. And in order to come up, you bend into your knees and then slowly rise up, take the arms over the head with an inhale. Exhale, hands come to heart center and release. So these are four postures that you can try to release stress. And the purpose of using breath to release stress is to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Throughout the day, throughout the week, we are constantly activating the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight response to stress. So activating the parasympathetic nervous system is where we begin to consciously relax the nervous system. So we begin to have a better digestion, uh, a better uh, response to stress. You're releasing that the hormone. You're, you're uh, allowing yourself to just feel better in the body and also the mind. Another practice is uh, breathing. So after you are done with these four postures, you can focus on um, a, a breath meditation. And the breath meditation that I want to share today is uh, very simple. All we are going to do is make the exhalation a little longer. So we're going to make the exhalation slow and a little longer than the inhalation. So you can try it maybe initially with a deep breath in for three, two, one. And maybe as you exhale, you count five, four, three, two, one. So the exhalation is a little longer. Try that way. And then once you're done with the deep breathing, you can just simply breathe in without having to count and then allow yourself to exhale slowly. And then inhale and allow yourself to exhale slowly. So let's practice that, closing our eyes. You can sit the way I am sitting or come back to Sukhasana. Relax your shoulders. And you can practice deep breathing by counting silently, inhaling for three, two, one. Exhaling for five, four, three, two, one. Let's do it in silence. And now begin to let go of the counting and just inhale and exhale the way you were doing it. Inhaling effortlessly and slowly exhaling. And when you're done, you can open your eyes. So this meditation, you can do it again anywhere uh, from uh, three to five cycles of breath, maybe initially, because you may, if you've never tried meditation, it may not come easy for you. But then eventually build it up where you start to do 15 and then 20 cycles, and then maybe sit for like 
10 minutes uh, and you will begin to notice a major difference. So initially maybe you start while working, uh, staying in your chair at work and then you just practice three to five of those uh, breathing meditation. And then over time, maybe you will make it a part of your daily routine in the mornings and evenings. Next, we have doctors from Manasa offering you Ayurvedic tips to help balance stress levels. Hi, I'm Dr. Archana from Mahanasa. Mahanasa believes in food as medicine. Today's topic is stress and stomach. Stomach issues are a common or a major symptoms during stress or anxiety. Uh, gut and brain are always interlinked. Like you can feel butterflies in your stomach when you are about to do a stressful job or you can feel a naughty stomach when you have a heavy or weak. Not only this, we feel loss of appetite when we are sad and also we feel cravings of eating junk foods when we are worried or irritated. Stress can upset our digestive system. It can low our digestion and also it can cause discomfort in our abdomen, pain, uh, bloating and constipation or even it can cause diarrhea. In many people it causes severe lack of appetite. Not only that but even it worsens the irritable bowel syndrome and stomach ulcers. Many gastrointestinal disorders are always interlinked with stress and anxiety. Inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, it increases and the risk of uh, reoccurrence of these diseases are more due to chronic stress. Peptic ulcer which uh, causes due to eating spicy can also increase due to the stress. Uh, and irritable bowel syndrome which is an infection uh, more than treating an infection handling the stress is most important in IBS acid reflux which is caused due to non-nutritional foods poor eating or sleeping immediately after food having large meals can also increase due to stress uh, increased anxiety and stress have an uh, increasing risk of gastroesophageal reflux disease this is because esophageal function and lower esophageal sphincter functions are reduced due to the chronic stress. Uh, not only pain, bloating or abdominal discomfort but prolonged stress can also uh, reduce the pain threshold. All these diseases can be correlated to psychosomatic disorders. Uh, when we come to the behavior. When the people are stressed, most of the people go for binge drinking. Binge drinking also increases the stomach disorders and smoking. Smoking can also cause acid reflux uh, leading to peptic ulcers or heartburn and also to the stomach ulcers but at a larger risk it leads to the stomach cancer. Apart from these, cravings of eating. Uh, that is cravings of non-nutritional food leads to gastrointestinal disorders. Initially, due to the craving, we tend to eat more of fatty and sugary foods which leads to epinephrine, uh, secreting of epinephrine hormone which creates lack of appetite. But prolonged stress uh, releases cortisol hormone from the adrenaline which increases the hunger and increases the craving of sugary and fatty foods which leads to the low metabolism due to insulin resistance. So food which increases serotonin hormone is the most required to control the stress and at the same time depending on the symptoms of the gastrointestinal disorders we need to select the food which reduces the gastrointestinal symptoms. Uh, before knowing which are the uh, foods that increases serotonin, there are few things mentioned that we have to follow during or while eating. One thing, we have to sit in a calm, relaxed place while eating. Do not uh, enter into the argument while having your food. Don't get anger while eating. Always uh, choose, uh, choose very consciously while you are eating during stress or depression. Don't talk while eating, do not watch or do not read while eating and eating on time is also most important. Apart from this, 
sleep diet and physical activity is most important along with yoga pranayama and meditation all this together can, we can easily cope up with the stress and stomach issues in ayurveda we speak about sattvic foods sattvic foods helps to control our emotions and overcome the depression stress or anxiety these sattvic foods includes organic foods seasonal fruits and vegetables whole grains nuts seeds milk ghee cinnamon basil turmeric and many other having these sattvic foods in a, a larger quantity in our diet can uh, completely help us to come out of the stress so now let us know which are the foods which are good in ser- increasing the serotonin have first thing is carbohydrate that is complex carbohydrate complex carbohydrates helps to increase the serotonin level and these can be got by having whole grains and vitamins vitamins curb the stress hormones and it increases the strength by increasing the immunity system fresh seasonal fruits helps to receive these vitamins especially vitamin c helps to strengthen the immune system and also to cope up with stress next in the vitamins is a magnesium magnesium also helps to reduce the stress level and uh, fresh vegetables especially the green vegetables we can have more of magnesium in this omega 3 fatty acids especially found in fish like salmon and tuna and also in the flax seeds will help to relieve the uh, stress hormones and to increase the serotonin hormone milk and healthy fats like ghee also helps in increasing the serotonin hormone herbal tea which are rich in antioxidants can also have uh, we can have it in a regular basis to cope up with stress these foods which increases the serotonin hormone helps us to get relieved from the stress anxiety and depression, uh, depression and uh, by this we can cope up with the gastrointestinal disorders having these foods will definitely help in stress and stomach issues but we should know the few other foods which we have to avoid for uh, non recurrence of this stress and stomach issues those are caffeine we have to avoid the caffeine products alcohol refined sugar all purpose flour or we call it as uh, maida that has to be avoided processed foods irradiated foods packed foods all these should be avoided we should always eat the freshly prepared foods fresh uh, fresh and seasonal vegetables and fruits whole grains nuts and nuts like uh, pista almond walnut and seeds like flax seeds sunflower seeds and the pumpkin seeds all these will help to increase the serotonin hormone and at the same time avoiding the foods which i mentioned will help to overcome the depression stress or anxiety and by this we can definitely cope up with the stress and stomach issues here is a recipe which help you to uh, overcome the stress and stomach issues this is a wheat flour and flax seed roll the whole grain of wheat which is used in this roll and also the flax seeds will help to increase the serotonin hormone that is because whole wheat is a rich in col- uh, complex carbohydrate and also in dietary fiber and flax seeds are high in antioxidant omega 3 fatty acids and the combination of these two will definitely help to increase the serotonin hormone which is found more in stomach and gut and also in brain this serotonin hormone will have a mood variations in our uh, brain and it will have a healthy mood variations and at the same time it reduces the cortisol hormone which is a stress hormone so this wheat and flax seed roll can be had uh, alternative days or weekly thrice as a, a healthy snack or a breakfast or a dinner also this can be had and it helps to overcome the stress and stomach issues thank you follow these guidelines to overcome the stress and stomach issues and we will meet you back in the next episode with new topic and new recipes and new diet or foods to be taken thank you next we have doctors from shanti gram helping you to understand why yoga and ayurveda is extremely important for a healthy lifestyle when i was a child i did not know what is depression what is anxiety what is stressful life 
yesterday i was talking to one of my clients he was telling me he is very stressful he has been diagnosed with depression and anxiety disorder and now he is worried about getting ibs and insomnia let me tell you he is 8 years old yes you know over 3 million people in this world are diagnosed with depression over 260 million people are living with anxiety where are we heading with this technology and so called development namaste this is dr tripti how are you you don't have to say i'm fine if you are not it is absolutely normal if you are not fine all the time we are humans no wonder we are stressing out ourselves to find out how to reduce the stress it has been said if emotions are suppressed they do not go away they show up in your body now you must be wondering how how a disturbed mind can make you feel sick physically have you ever experienced any of these having sweaty palm heart is beating so fast or are you rushing to use washroom or having butterflies in stomach bloating some noise coming in stomach have you ever noticed these symptoms are prominent when you are facing some stressful situation for example if you are giving some presentation or waiting for some results or appearing for an interview and what not today i am going to talk about connection between your stomach problems and anxiety or stress absolutely stress can play a huge role in digestive disorders especially if you have irritable bowel syndrome what happens with the stressful situation or due to anxiety intestinal rhythm is hampered if intestine is moving too slow that means food is staying in your intestine for longer than normal period water is getting absorbed person will feel constipated bloating cramping pain abdomen sometimes nauseated if intestine is moving too fast person will have water is stool bloating cramping sometimes nausea they need to rush to use washroom and this is very embarrassing situation if we are stressful we have headache we don't feel like eating anything if you are thinking about let's say your favorite food your mouth is watery why because our body and mind is connected they are not different Let's say what Ayurveda tells us about stomach and stress. So Ayurveda says, Samadhatu, Samadosha, Samagni, Malakriya, Prasanna, Atma, Indriya, Manaha, Swasthe, Itya, Bhidiyate. So to have healthy body, we need Prasanna, Atma, Indriya, and Mana. That is optimum mental health. Ayurveda tells us, disturbed digestion is root cause of any disease. food is one of the important element of ayurvedic concepts it is one of the trayopasambhas that is three pillars of health so we need to know what to eat and what not to eat or what to avoid based on our health condition patya patya that is diet plays important role in our recovery so can you stay away from stress can you stop stressful situations coming in your way no can you stop working Can you stop thinking about your family? Can you avoid presentations, exams, strict boss, commute time, bad news, bad weather? No, we cannot. We are human, and we have to deal with one or other stressful situations in our life. So, what do we do? Let us help you with the goodness of Ayurveda. Remember, we are not trying to stop any stressful situation coming in your way. We are helping you to understand your body and mind better, so you can make your life better. Healthy dietary and lifestyle choices will help you to get healthy body and mind. So stay connected. Say yes to Ayurveda. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Hope these tips are helping you find a balance for the body and the mind, especially when there is stress involved. 
And now it's time to put all of this into action. Let us know in the comments which of these strategies works best for you and also what action you're going to take after watching this video.